Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome to the second episode of 13 Questions. And for today's uh, episode, we have the amazing Tyler Lesser who's joined us today. Hey, Tyler. Great to have you on the call today. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure to be here. I'm uh, excited to dive into not 12, but 13 questions. Tyler, so I know you're a huge advocate of um, sales reps becoming content creators Ooh. in today's remote selling ecosystem, right? Um, what's the number one tip for anyone who wants to record their very first video? The most important thing when creating videos, frankly, whether it's for one to many or one to one, is to remember that it is about connection, not perfection. Focus on using it to create a connection with your audience or your prospect. Use it to authentically share a story or how it is that you think you can help. And don't get hung up on trying to make it perfect. The odd ums or ahs don't matter. Dogs barking make it even better. It's about connection, not perfection. Just be you. Perfect. So one thing that I, uh, you know, I've uh, this has been on my mind since the time we met at um, Dublin. Um, how did you fall in love with making videos or even believing in them? I, you know what, I wrote a book recently called The Visual Sale, where we talk about the use of video through marketing, sales, even through to customer success. And one of the, sh- the stories I actually shared in the book was... A number of years ago, I want to say this is probably about six years ago or so, I was applying for an award called, actually it was sort of a a recognition program called Marketo's Fearless 50 at the time. And it was the first year they had launched it where they were building a list of the top 50 fearless marketers. And I felt like myself and my team had done a lot of pretty fearless things in our marketing programs with some really compelling ideas and content and campaigns. And, but to submit for the award, you didn't fill out a form or, you know, send an email. They asked you to make a one minute video and share it on social media uh, as your nomination. And a number, I saw a lot of nominations coming through because they were all online and, and all of them sort of felt the same. They were somebody just on camera kind of telling their story, you know, great, but nothing really stood out. And I thought, you know what? I could do better than that. (laughs) And so I made a kind of a parody song. Um, I used a a song at the time from the Imagine Dragons uh, called Whatever It Takes. And I made my own version of it about how I do whatever it takes to, you know, engage my audience. And I can't sing to be... To be very clear, Um, (laughs) but I put myself out there. I made this fun video that was like this parody music video. And um, I got so many upvotes. I got like listed not only in their Fearless 50, but I was one of the five people that they invited to their next conference. And if you go to my LinkedIn profile, you'll actually see a picture of my photo on the side of the Moscone Center. And that's what that's from because I was crowned. Um, It's great, right? And uh, that small video didn't take me much time to make, but it allowed me to put my creativity out there and connect with people. And from that moment on, I was like, I'm video first. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> so you mentioned this, right? You mentioned uh, about your book, The Visual Sale. Um, I know you co-authored the book, um, but for those of you all who already don't know this, um, Tyler was one of the co-authors for this book called Visual Sale. Um, it talks about how you can make videos, how, how you can create content, what's the best way to do it, and a lot of best practices around that. I'm going to drop the link in the comments below um, so you can go ahead and buy it off Amazon. But for Tyler, for uh, other than this, right? What's your favorite book, or what's your favorite read in the recent times? Oh, you know, I'm a big fan of um, uh, one is from Joe Polizzi, who runs, who was the the founder of the Content Marketing Institute. Um, actually, a series of his books. He talks all about the importance of content tilt and. Yeah strategies for developing your own unique unique approaches to your content strategy that are always built around being audience first. And that's really become the foundation for what I've done as a creator. And even as I think about, you know, marketing and sales strategies is that importance of developing your own unique voice in the market, the, your own unique proposition in terms of the content, the messages you're putting out there. And using that as a way to not only stand out, but to create really deep resonance with the specific audience you're going after. 
Um, so that's one of my favorites. And uh, there's a number of others that all sort of circle around that idea of um, how we really take an audience first approach to our content, yeah. to our marketing and to our selling. I think that stands uh, uh, quite true, even in sales, right? Uh, put your audience first and then uh, everything you know Absolutely. is quite a cake one. I'm talking about audience, Tyler. Um, you know, you know, on LinkedIn, there's a lot of uh, content creators, uh, you know, who are building their personal brand today, right? Uh, one thing that I want to understand, or your get your perspective on, is how important is it in today's world, um, you know, for a salesperson to build um, a personal brand on LinkedIn? And uh, what's the best advice you could give for folks who are just getting started? So I think it can absolutely be very advantageous to develop your personal brand on platforms like LinkedIn. Um, what I will say though is that. It's not necessarily for everybody. And I don't think it's a prerequisite to be successful as a salesperson. I know many salespeople who are extremely successful who aren't building up their personal brand online, and that's perfectly fine. Um, so what I encourage you to think about is, first and foremost, what is the goal of you investing in something like that, right? Building up a personal brand can be a way to sort of solidify if you feel you've got a unique perspective in your marketplace and you want to use it as a way to possibly attract prospects, right? Which is what some folks do. That's one great strategy. And in that case, you're going to be talking about topics that your target audience cares about. Another strategy in building up your personal brand is more about helping you ensure you continue to develop your career over time. And in that case, for example, as a sales rep, you might be out there talking more and more about sales strategy. Right. Even if that's not yeah. if you're if you're selling to CIOs, right? The point is you're um, putting out your knowledge, your experience, you're building a network of other sales professionals, and that's going to help you from a career perspective. If you ever are looking for a new opportunity or a, a growth opportunity, you're likely going to find other sales leaders in your market that are going yeah. to already know who you are, and that will give you a leg up. So those are the two biggest things I see people like sort of it's either to build a prospect audience or to help grow their kind of peer community for potential career development. In yeah. either case, no different from what we just talked about, be really intentional about making it about your audience and sort of hyper respect their time, their interests, um, and, and be open and sharing. Of course, it's all about the value you provide, um, but try to keep it quick, right? A lot yeah. of people will, uh, you know, sort of try to put out a lot of long form content, things like that. Keep it quick, keep it punchy, um, and make sure you aren't just putting your content out there, but you're participating in the community. You're doing lots of commenting on others and sharing of others. That helps to create a community around you as well. So uh, from whatever you just said, right, I think um, this brings me, you know, brings two questions to my mind. Um, first thing is, you know, with a lot of people building uh, their personal brand on LinkedIn today, uh, and uh, from whatever you've seen today, who is your favorite um, person brand or content creator on LinkedIn? It can be it can be somebody who's an individual contributor. It can be maybe a sales leader. It can be a thought leader. Anybody, right? Who do you think? Who has got you know some today? Somebody who I've I've followed for a long time, and I have an uh, incredible amount of appreciation for in the sales community, uh, which is where I spend a lot of time, uh, is Josh Braun. Now, Josh yeah. Braun has done such an incredible job of putting out consistent content on his LinkedIn profile that is always incredibly insightful and incredibly helpful. And they're often based on sort of personal stories of things that of how he's done things or things he's seen happen around him. Um, his LinkedIn channel is one where I pause every once in a while. And I think, you know, I'd probably pay $10 a month for access to this LinkedIn channel because of how valuable it is. Uh, so he's a great example of somebody who does that and is always giving value in very insightful ways. And uh, I don't know if I remember this right, but I think um, uh, before I landed my first role in SaaS, I think it was Josh Brown's content that actually gave me a lot of perspective there in you terms go. of how any. So <laughs> <laughs> to hear that from you, I think it was quite refreshing. Um, and so one thing, right? Uh, when it comes to selling, I know there's usually there's no right way to do it, or there's no best way to sell, right? But to but to you, uh, but to you, Tyler, uh, to you as an individual. Um, which stage uh, of an outreach do you think um, you personally like to include videos as um, one of your uh, outreach methods? So, uh, yeah, certainly a big advocate of using video as part of outreach, whether I'm receiving it or mm -hmm. whether my team's sending it. And 
I find that, um, you know, using videos fairly early on in a sequence is really, really helpful because it can help somebody very early on get a sense for who you are, what you really do. And frankly, that you're just a human who cares enough to put in the time to make somebody a quick video. So, you know, if you can do that early in your sequence, it changes the rest of the sequence, right? If I've already seen a video from somebody, I'm more likely to even pay attention to their following emails or pick up the phone when they call, you know, because of a lot of those things that happened. So I'm a big advocate of that. I think make a strong early impression and it will improve the entire sequence that you use. Perfect. Um, so uh, I talk to a lot of SDRs day in and day out, right? We, we connect on LinkedIn and network with people. Two common reasons I uh, hear from these SDRs, um, you know, at least the ones I've spoken to is one, of course, you know, hey, I'm not really sure if I look great in a video, if I sound yep. great. Um, you know, I remember you telling me, end it and send it. But uh, I don't see that happening most times, right? Yep. Um, that's one aspect. And another thing that I quite commonly uh, uh, hear from these guys is, hey, it takes too long for me to record a video. I try sure. and curate the content and then I have to go over it a million times for me to see, okay, hey, I lo- do I like it? Will my prospect like it? And then, yeah. uh, you know, it, it just takes forever. Right? And because of all this, because of all this anxiety that comes along with it, um, yeah. they say, I don't, I, I just tend to skip videos. I'd love to do it, but I tend to skip videos. So what's your yeah. two cents for these people who want to get into video prospecting? So two things that I found can make it a lot more efficient and frankly, a lot more effective for for sellers when they aren't necessarily adept at video already. Number one is, um, you know, using a tool like a Vidyard, you can record a video message quickly that is a screen share along with just your camera on in a little circle in the corner. And what that does is it allows you to take away from you being the center of attention so much and feeling like I don't look good or my background isn't great or whatever it happens to be. When you become just a sort of a smaller camera in the corner, it feels a little bit different. And you can focus on the content on the screen as really the center of attention. So that can help to mitigate some of that on-camera lack of confidence, if you will. And then um, secondly is as you do that, if you can find a pretty standard, almost like script that you can do over and over again, right? It's no different from like a cold call script or things like that. Um, You will get hyper-efficient with it quite quickly. I find people are really inefficient when every video they try to make a little bit different and that's hard. But for example, a very common one that I see some sales reps use because it's easily uh, replicable is if I were prospecting you, for example, I might go to your, either your company website or your LinkedIn profile, right? Pretty much everybody's got both of those. And I would bring that up on the screen, hit the record. And the reason I'm doing that is it's also something you're going to immediately recognize, but then I've got a pretty standard script, right? Hey there, it's Tyler at Vidyard. I was on your LinkedIn profile and I noticed that A. The reason I'm, you know, I'm talking to a lot of other people like that. And the one big problem they're all sharing these days is this. I'm curious if that's a pain point you might have as well, or if you've got ideas for how to solve it that I might be able to share with some of these others. Um, If it's something that you'd be open to speaking about, I'd be happy to send you another video with some other ideas, whatever, right? So I get that script once and I can do that over and over again. And now every time I do it, it feels a little bit more natural. I can put a little bit more of myself into it. I can yeah. do a little bit of body language. But your character me, it will come. Perfect. Yeah. For those of you all watching this, I think you just got a quick actionable takeaway to shoot your first video. I hope this helps. Um, so Tyler, uh, since we're around video prospecting, right? Um, if you had to prioritize, uh, uh, you know, in terms of which team should ideally be sending videos, yeah. Uh, what I mean by that is, should it be, um, you know, the marketing team using it for larger campaigns or should it be sales teams, you know, sending in more of a one-to-one kind of a video? Yeah. So, I mean, clearly video is a very powerful way to educate audiences, to engage them, um, to create some transparency. So I'm obviously a big advocate of using it in any communications. Um, but I think the difference is when marketing teams use video, um, it tends to be more of a sort of a a bigger sort of planned storyline, much more edited, but something that they're really trying to create a very, very specific message in a much more produced way and and doing it in a way that's going to be more visual for their audience. For sales reps, um, I think it's equally, if not more important for them to be using video, but very much the difference comes back to that first point of their use cases. It's about connection, not perfection. And so as a salesperson, you're going to be doing very different kinds of video than your marketing team is. 
And this is where we talk about, this is about putting yourself out there, connecting with your audience and saying, Hey, this is who I am. I'm a real person. I honestly just want to help. And I want to share a story with you from my own personal experience. I think that's the big difference and it should be used in both, but I think it's underutilized quite a much, quite a bit in sales today. And I think it's a big opportunity. Human to human connection all the way. Um, so, uh, in, you know, this has been, um, an age old debate, right? How important do you think, uh, you know, how important do you feel, uh, it is important to have the sales and marketing alignment in general? Um, sales and marketing alignment is nice and obviously important, but I actually think about it as we need to strive for sales and marketing integration and collaboration, yeah. right? Because alignment is very, very important through the lens of when we think about alignment of marketing and sales, we think, well, we have to have aligned goals, right? And that's the often where it starts. So we're both driven by pipeline and revenue as opposed to having different goals. And that's critical for today's market um, because of how people buy, right? And how they learn that marketing and sales are so intertwined. So I think alignment through consistent goals and shared strategies is important, but sales and marketing integration, which is really that next level is saying, well, we don't just have the same goals. We have the same integrated execution plan. Right? We're working together to understand how are we engaging our audiences through the full funnel? How are we prioritizing who we're going after? How are we setting up our qualification models? You know, how are we um, collaborating in key accounts? And that's when I think we see really, really strong efficiencies gained uh, when we get to that level. So that's where I hope we start talking about sales and marketing that's integration more than alignment. Yeah. Lovely. Um so see, Tyler as a name um, is something that's become quite synonymous to videos, video prospecting, anything video, right? But beneath all that, is Tyler a fan of cold calling? <laughs> <laughs> so I am a fan of, 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 of doing cold calling. I encourage our own teams to do cold calling. Um, I myself as a recipient... I don't think I've answered a cold call in many years. And some people will call me a hypocrite as a result, but the reality is some people will and some people won't, right? And that's why I tell my team, just because I don't answer cold calls doesn't mean your prospects won't. And it still yeah. works for our team, absolutely. So get out there, do it, become a great cold caller, and it will help you in other, every other part of your sales process by being able to really hone your message over a call. Really important. Great. Um so what's your one word of advice um, to SDRs who are afraid to pick up, you know, pick up the phone, uh, they don't want to make cold calls, or, you know, yeah. they dread making videos. How do they overcome that fear primarily? You know, the, the best advice that I've heard from this, actually, I think I first read it from Josh Braun, um, was to try to detach yourself from the outcome. Okay. And what that means is don't put so much personal stake in the outcome of every call or every video. Right. If it's a personal sense of rejection, if somebody hangs up you on you on a call, it's very difficult to pick it up and do another one. But if you can detach yourself from that and say, hey, my goal here is to just make that call. And however yeah. it goes, doesn't matter. Um, that can really change the game for you and make you even a better, better caller and a better video maker, too. Perfect. A DTM leader, an advocate of video prospecting, of course, um, an author, right? This is something we already know. Who is Tyler? That we who's the Tyler <laughs> that we all don't know yet? <laughs> well, I I mean uh, I'm I'm first a uh, a father, second a husband, uh, so those are the orders of my personal priorities. Uh, and you know another little tidbit about me is that I am actually an engineer by trade. I went through school for uh, systems design engineering. I started as a software developer in my career, and here we are today as a marketing leader uh, in a video tech company. So you know, um, there's a lot of paths where you're going to go. And if you're in sales today, uh, it doesn't mean you're going to be in sales tomorrow. I think enjoy it for what it is. Go, you know, take it where you can. Um, find out what you're passionate about in sales, really lean into that and um, see where your career can take you. Sounds perfect. Tyler, thank you for your time today. Um, one last question before we let you go today. Um, you know, there's a lot of uncertainty un uncertainty today, um, you know, in the tech industry, so yep. many uh, layoffs happening everywhere. Big companies are laying off people. Um, you know, a lot of folks who have lost their job are unsure, you know, if they're going to be able to put meal on the uh, plate if they're going to have a job the next month, right? What's the word of advice or what, what's the word of encouragement for these folks 
um, you know, who are trying to land their next role. Um, how should they or what should they do, you know, to cut through the noise um, and successfully land the next role? Well, there, there's so many things um, and that other people can tell you. The one unique offering I can give you is that using video messages in the job hunt process can be really, really effective. So a tool like Vidyard is free. Um, and we actually have a promo code job seeker that if you're using free Vidyard, you can go in to upgrade to the pro version for a monthly, enter the promo code job seeker, J O B S E E K E R, and it will unlock three months free of pro so that you can use all the features to try to help land that next job. And, um, we actually have some different tips on our website for the different kinds of videos you may want to use. For example, um, a quick video message to the recruiter for a role or the hiring manager before you even submit your application. Um, a short video after an interview to recap some of the high points, re-express your interest. There's a few different ways you can use it that I hear time and time again help people stand out from other applicants. They get more interviews and they have a much more engaging process because the hiring manager feels like they know them before they've actually met them. So I encourage you to check that out. If you want some more of those tips, um, just search for Vidyard Job Seeker, um, and you should find some great resources and actually some templates for how to do that yourself. That's going to be really helpful for these guys. Um, thank you so much, Tyler, for your time. This is 13 Questions with Tyler Lesser. I'll see you on the next one.